Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video for you guys, and I know that this is uh, looking like a little bit of a mess back here, um, and I know it's it's late on a Sunday night, and I'm just throwing this together really quick, so hence the reason that this is not going to be a particularly long or detailed video, but I wanted to talk about a project I've been working on, and hence the reason for all the mess, and um, also let you guys know that I'm going to be doing some new stuff with this and some full coverage on what I have here. So I recently picked up a Unify, Unify, well, Unify, Unify Dream Machine Pro. Anyway, the UDM Pro from Ubiquity, and it is one of their new kind of enterprise class appliances. It's a router, it's a switch, it's a uh, um, video recording device for an NVR for their camera system, uh, among some other things like that. It's also got a switch built in, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a pretty high-end unit, and these are only 380 bucks, and uh, it's something that people have been really excited about for a while because it has the capability to do routing at up to 10 gigabits per second, which is just insanely fast. So it actually has a 10 gigabit WAM port and a gigabit WAM port, and then a 10 gigabit LAN port. Now, most people don't have a 10 gigabit WAN, and it's also still only capable of doing IPS, which is uh, intrusion prevention, where it actually uh, digs through the packets and actively blocks stuff on your network. Um, it's only able to do that at 3.5 gigabits per second, although, Something I want to touch on there because their specs on their website say that it can do up to 3.5 gigabits per second. But then when you enable it in the actual controller on the Dream Machine Pro, it says it'll limit it to one gigabit per second. So I'm actually not quite sure what is fully accurate there. I think it's somewhere in between. Um, and I'll touch more on why I think that here in a moment. So part of this project though is I wanted to get this unit installed and um, it was partly just because I liked the idea of having an all-in-one appliance to do everything. And I liked something that was gonna be able to do IPS at really high speed because my little Unify security gateway up here is only rated to 80 megabits a second, 80 to 100 range if you enable it. Um, and so it wasn't something I had enabled. I wanted to be able to use it. And then I do plan to roll out a Unify security camera system at my home. And so I wanted something that could also act with that. And I figured this is a good replacement for everything for a pretty low price. And I decided that I also wanted to go ahead and try and get faster internet. So the original plan was to try and get Comcast to install their two gigabit download, two gigabit upload fiber optic service here, but it turns out I'm too far away from one of their nodes to do that, which it's not that I'm even that far away. It's just that their limit is 1700 feet from a node. So like basically nobody can actually get the service, but thankfully Comcast is able to say they have two gigabit service. Anyway, I was pretty annoyed by that, um, but I was prepared that that was probably gonna be the answer. So I decided that I wanted to go ahead and try and figure out how can I do two gigabits or close to two gigabits over gigabit internet at my home? And I reached out to Comcast and decided that I was going to pick up two of their one gigabit lines for the Xfinity consumer service. So it's about a gigabit down. It's only 35 megs to 40 megs up. Uh, I've seen it do a little bit higher than that. Um, so I wanted to get that and try and do aggregate bandwidth with load balancing on the Unified Dream Machine Pro. Now, I was a little bit concerned that that was actually gonna be impossible. And this is one of the reasons I'm making this video, even though I'm planning to do a full review of the UDMP, uh, along with some network cleanup and talking about how that works and what the experience is like with the faster internet. But there have been a lot of false reports on Reddit, various YouTubers and stuff like that. Uh, people on Twitter talking about the UDM Pro saying that it cannot do load balancing. And I was really confused by that because all of the regular Unify security gateways are capable of doing load balancing between multiple WAN IPs. And so I was a little bit confused as to why they would have removed that feature on something like this. Maybe it was coming later, something like that. I spoke to a few people on Reddit and I decided to pick up the device anyway because I wanted to test it for myself. And worst case, if I couldn't do load balancing, I was gonna use my Unify security gateway and just have two networks here. But uh, it does support it. So all those claims online are completely false. It is something that is fully supported. Now, depending on what you mean by fully supported, it doesn't necessarily have all the features that an enterprise firewall would in terms of load balancing. And I'll get to that in a second, as well as performance results. But um, there is a catch. And part of the reason that I figured out why some people think it's not an option is if you use the classic view for the settings on the Unified Dream Machine, the option to switch to load balancing is blanked out. You cannot do anything with it. It's there. You can't click on it. I saw that. I was worried. I actually prefer the older settings. The new settings is not as organized. It takes longer to get to everything. But I decided to check by going into the newer settings to find out. And yes, you can, when setting up a second WAN address, switch it to weighted load balancing and then give a percentage of what you want to be the load balance for that WAN uh, 
WAN interface. So it is something that works, it is supported, and to confirm that it's supported, I'll get to a few little performance numbers here. So it's kind of hard to test a dual WAN uh, load balancing setup like that, but I was able to, and part of that problem is because I don't have any 10 gigabit clients right now. I have a 10 gigabit switch with a fiber optic cable going to the UDMP, but I don't have any single machine that can hit more than a gigabit. So I was able to run Netflix's fast.com tests on multiple machines at the same time, plugged into different switch ports, and I was able to see well over one gigabit. Enough over one gigabit that it was definitely not a result of just getting a boost from Comcast as they like to do. Um, I was seeing somewhere in the realm of about 800 to 900 megabits on one and another 600 on the other. So uh, the maximum total throughput I saw was about 1.6 gigabits per second. So still not quite as good as I want. That could actually be a limit of the fact that these are technically running through a single coax cable to go outside. So I may work with Comcast to see if they can have another run come into the house to potentially improve that. Um, but I wanted to mention that because also that could be a result of the way Unify does their load balancing. I don't know all the back end details of how it works. There are not a lot of people that have tested it because oftentimes when you do load balancing, you're doing it in a more enterprise like environment. You're going to get a sonic wall. You're going to get a, a FortiGate. You're going to go with something from NetGate, PFSense, um, to do that kind of load balancing because they have the higher end load balancing features. So it's possible that that's just in relation to overhead on this machine as to why I didn't see the, um, uh, full aggregate bandwidth. Again, it also could be related to the coax cable. I'm not entirely sure there, but it's enough over the one gig that I know it's not something coming from Comcast. It was enough to prove to me that the load balancing is functioning the way it's supposed to. And um, then uploads a different story that I haven't played around with much yet. Um, so that's the other thing I wanna mention is the UDMP's capabilities in terms of load balancing. Just like all the other Unify security gateways, there is not that much that you can do with it. It is really basically just basic Here's load balancing. Um, it's not like something with a sonic wall where you can define that you want a specific client to be connected to a specific WAN interface um, or set up, you know, load balancing plus failover. And I mean, obviously this will do failover with the load balancing. If one of these WANs goes down, I still have internet access. But there, there is features that you can do in a sonic wall or a FortiGate or something like that that's higher end that uh, you will not see on here. So it's not something I'd recommend for an enterprise environment. But if you're a person that's either looking for just a lot of bandwidth or you're a person that is set up in a situation where maybe you can, for whatever reason, and this is totally the situation some people are in, you can get like 100 megabits on one line and 100 megabits on another line but you can't get 200 megabits from one company or something like that you can do two lines and do aggregate bandwidth a plus failover which is nice i'm using one company here so if the wan goes down it's just going to go down the only thing that it would prevent from is if one of these uh, modems died but um for people that have two actual service providers that also could be really useful you have that failover and load balance together um but this is just something i really wanted to talk about and get a video out as quick as i could for it because there's a lot of misinformation online about it. And uh, so far, my experience with the UDMP has actually been great. There's been a lot of complaints online about it. And I maybe wanted to address a few of those here, including the load balancing being something that people thought wasn't supported at all. Um, and then people were having some trouble so there was rumors with the older, uh, one of the beta editions of the UDMP, that uh, if one SFP plus port, there's two SFP plus ports on here, was running at one gigabit, you can only run at one gigabit on the other one. And I also wanna confirm that board revision five, which the retail unit is shipping with, has fixed that completely. So that is not an issue anymore. Um, and then a lot of people are complaining about it not being able to boot if it doesn't have a WAN uh, cable plugged in. I have not personally experienced that. I was able to boot and get to the setup screen without a WAN cable plugged in. Now to continue through setup, you do have to plug in a WAN cable. Uh, another thing is people talking about how you need to use a Unify account to sign into this. That is actually, in fact, true. I did not find a way to set up a local account. However, I'm personally okay with that. Uh, I prefer having access to my stuff through the Unify account, so I use it anyway. Um, but one of the other concerns was two-factor authentication. What happens when you try and log into this machine with two-factor authentication um, and you don't have internet access? It will think for a minute and then let you log in with just your username and password. It will not ask for 2FA if there is no internet access. That is something that they have fixed because that was actually a problem I ran into with my Cloud Key Gen 2, um, which I think has since been fixed. But a while back when I was using it, I didn't have internet access, so I couldn't get into my controller to try and diagnose why I didn't have internet access because it couldn't prompt me for the 2FA code. So that's also been fixed. Um, 
So everything's been honestly working really good on it so far. I hope the experience continues to be good. Um, one of the other things is there have been some reports online of unplugging the power cable, causing the device to uh, have problems and not boot anymore because of sudden power loss and that you should plug it into a UPS. I wanted to note a few things about that. So they do recommend in the manual that you should go ahead and try and plug this into a UPS if you can. Um, however, it shouldn't actually be an issue. And this is according to some UI staff online. And I'll see if I can find the post again, but there was some UI, UI staff in uh, the uh, Ubiquity community that talked about it not being a problem, that they've done a lot of work that you should be able to just unplug it and it shouldn't hurt anything. Um, now the device does not have an official way in the GUI to shut it down, which is a complaint that I think they need to add. They need to add a shutdown button for the Unified Dream Machine, um, but besides that option not being in there, you can SSH into it and issue a shutdown command that way. So there's still a way to do it. But uh, the UI guy gave all the coding of how to do it through SSH, um, which is, is pretty simple. But he also said that you should be fine. Just go ahead and unplug it. And that's what he would recommend instead of wasting the time to SSH into it and do a shutdown command. So now I figured I would just give a little bit of a, of a look at what I'm doing here. I know it's a mess. Like I said, this will all be cleaned up at some point in the future, and I will do some video content on that. As you can tell, I've got some projects going on here. So this is kind of more the teaser part of the, the project type work that I'm doing. So here's the two uh, Comcast modems, though, um, both running, and they are connected to the Unified Dream Machine. And this right here, hopefully I can get the color to focus. We'll verify that one of those SFP ports is running at gigabit, the green one, and uh, the, well, the yellow cable, the green light, and then the other one is running at 10 gigabit, which is the white light, which is going up here, running at 10 gig up here as well. There we go. So we got that going. I really need to clean up my server rack. I'm aware of this, and that is also part of a project that I will be filming here in the future in relation to these server cases that I have here, um, along with I do have this beautiful 10 gigabit SFP dual 10 gigabit SFP plus adapter that I'm excited to use. So I am building out a 10 gig network here. I've got to get a uh, Unify's 10 gigabit 16 port switch. So that's also plans for the future. But um, these two servers here, I'm going to be moving my actual server builds, which are this guy here. I know it's dark. My lights aren't over here, but that is the uh, my PF or not PF sense um, Proxmox virtualization machine. And then here's my Windows one, which is going to be getting turned into a Proxmox virtualization machine. And they're going in these server chassis to stick in there. So pretty excited to put all of that together. And I'll be doing a lot of content on that. But uh, anyway, that mostly just covers the information about the Unified Dream Machine Pro that I really wanted to cover here. Um, I will do a full video on it at some point that will talk about not just its features, but uh, more direct performance, potentially with some proper benchmarks. Um, I'm going to try and test out the, uh, the switch ports on it because rumor has it that these eight one gigabit switch ports cannot do more than a gigabit total on the back plane, which means if you have two devices trying to pull a gigabit at the same time on there that will be limited to 500 megabit instead. So that's something that I want to test because I'm not entirely sure about that yet. And um, I'll also do some software feature overviews, uh, reliability, stability overviews, how quiet it is, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll have a full full review of that coming. That'll probably be a little while because I'm also going to go ahead and get the uh, get a hard drive installed in there and get some cameras set up to test it with that as well. But so far it is actually a really great device. It consolidates a lot of different things into one package. And um, even though you can't manage multiple sites from the controller, I find Unify's login system for managing multiple controllers is actually more organized. And um, personally, I prefer to just have a controller at each site um, for some stuff. And I mean, yeah, that can get expensive if you're doing a lot of sites, but I do think it's a good idea for organization in my personal opinion. But um, anyway, yeah, it's a pretty good device and I'm excited to uh, do more content on it. But I've got other videos for you guys coming first, including my full review of the Model F keyboard. And then uh, after that, my full review of the FX Tech Pro 1 phone, which is something that I have in my pocket right now. But here, I'll give you guys a little bit of a teaser of sorts. Hopefully I can open it. So this phone here, I will be doing a full review on. Overall, pretty happy, but lots of uh, interesting information, I will say, to come about that phone. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time we uh, upload a video here. And uh, 
Don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you guys are interested in this machine. And hopefully I answered some of your questions about the UDM Pro down here because uh, that, that was kind of my goal was to hopefully answer some questions for you guys. So, um, and if you have any questions, specific things you want me to test in the full review, please leave a comment because I will certainly do that. Anyway, thank you again, everybody, for watching and have a wonderful uh, week, I guess, because this should be uploaded tomorrow on Monday. So thank you, everybody.